Hello and welcome to Enchanted Rose Costumes. My name is Marika and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I made this vintage inspired frock. I hope you enjoy. Starting off, I used 3 meters of 58 inch wide cotton sateen. And for my patterns, I used Butterick 5526, 6133 and a self-drafted skirt and pockets. I like to trace out my patterns so I don't lose all the sizes, and this is very helpful when frankening patterns together so I don't lose the original pattern. And then I mocked up my new pattern. Something I get asked quite often is what do I do with my mock-up once I'm finished with it? And the answer to that is I usually save the larger pieces for new mock-ups. In fact, part of today's material is from the mock-up for my 1890s combinations from earlier this year. For pieces that aren't large enough to be recycled into new mock-ups, I bring into stores that recycle textiles. Once I was happy with my mock-up, I added any alterations that I made to my pattern and then got ready to cut out my sateen. First things first, I ironed my material. And then I laid out all my pattern pieces on top of the material and cut everything out. Not shown here are two skirt rectangles that are 32 inches long by 40 inches wide. Once all the pieces were cut out, I then serged the edges of my bodice. My original plan for a cleaner finish on the interior of the bodice was to use a Hong Kong finish on the seams, but I didn't have any material on hand that I liked and I didn't have enough fabric left of the sateen to do it with self fabric. After serging all the edges, I then pinned the bodice pieces together with the right sides facing each other, making sure to match up the notches along the princess seams. Moving over to my machine, I stitched the pieces together with the convex piece on the bottom so the feed dogs could ease the pieces together. Once all the bodice pieces were sewn together, I then pinned and stitched the shoulder seams together with the wrong sides facing each other so I could sew a French seam. And once those seams were complete, I then pressed open the seams on a tailor's ham and slightly clipped into the seam to release any tension along the princess seams. Setting the bodice aside, I then moved on to the collar. First, I stitched the center back of the collar together. I then folded the collar in half the long way and stitched around the edges, leaving a section open at the center. And then I graded the seam allowance, taking care that I didn't clip into the stitching.
and then press the seam allowance down for a clean finish. With both sides of the tie graded, I then turned the collar right side out and pinned one side of the open section along the neck of the bodice and stitched it in place. And setting the bodice aside once again, I started on the sleeves. First I pinned and stitched the sleeves with the right side together. I then folded up the bottom edge of the sleeve and stitched in place. And then I added two rows of gathering stitches around the sleeve head. I then pinned the lower part of the sleeve to the bodice and gathered the sleeve to fit the arm's eye. I then stroke the gathers with a pin to help even everything out. And then I pinned the top of the sleeve to the arm's eye. And once both sides were gathered and pinned, I stitched everything in place. Moving on to the skirt, I measured 7 inches down from the top and placed a mark. I then matched one side of my pocket to that mark with the wrong sides facing each other and pinned it in place. I put the wrong sides together because I wanted to finish the interior of the skirt with French seams. Next, I stitched a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the skirt. And then I pressed the pocket towards the skirt and clipped into the seam allowance, stopping at the stitching line. And then I stitched a quarter of an inch away from the newly pressed edge to finish it. And then I repeated these steps with the remaining pocket pieces. Once all my pockets were attached, I then lined up the skirt with the wrong sides facing each other and pinned them together. And then I stitched the skirt and pockets together. Once it was all stitched together, I then graded the seam allowance and turned it wrong side out and pressed the edges. And then I pinned around the edges again and then stitched everything in place. As you've just seen, there are several steps when sewing inseam pockets with a French seam, but I think it gives a really nice clean finish to the inside of the garment and it also helps for keeping things from fraying so your materials last much longer. Next I lined up the center front and center back marks and the side seams on the bodice and the skirt. And then I pleated the skirt with 4 inch wide inverted box pleats.
and then I stitched everything in place. With the skirt attached, it's time to work on finishing the center front of the frock. I started by folding my placket pieces in half and stitching the tops together. Next, with the right sides together, I pinned the placket down each side of the center front opening and stitched it in place. After stitching, I then pressed the seam allowance towards the center front, and then folded the other side of the placket over the raw edge and pinned everything in place. Moving on to the bottom of the placket, it was a little tricky to say the least, and I had to origami it together. I'm not gonna lie, this part didn't exactly turn out how I wanted it to. There is a pucker at the center front that I'm not happy with. I'm mostly blaming the fact that it was pretty late when I was putting this together, and I keep telling myself that I really should stop doing the tricky bits when I'm tired, but I never listen. So at this point I can live with it, but I may be changing it in the future. And once everything was pinned, I stitched in the ditch to secure the placket. And then to secure the collar in place, I used a quick whip stitch. Next, I turned the bottom of the dress up 2 inches and pinned everything in place. And then I stitched it in place with my invisible hem stitch on my domestic. With the hem complete, it was time to add the buttonholes. My machine comes with an automatic buttonholer foot, which makes life so much easier when adding buttons to garments. After stitching all the buttonholes, I then cut them open with my Clover buttonhole cutter. and with a four strand wax thread, sewed my buttons in place. And with that, my new vintage inspired frock is complete.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I had quite a lot of fun with this project and I think I will definitely be making another one in the future. There are a couple things that I would change about it. The first thing I would probably do is change the shape of the skirt. I am more drawn towards the A-line or the circle skirt or three-quarter skirt or anything, anything that is trim at the waist and goes out to the knees. Just because I feel it flatters my figure a bit more. So that is like one of the big changes that I'd change about this. I think another thing I'd probably change would be the button placket. Now, when I put it in, I was quite tired, so I wasn't fully paying attention to what I was doing. And because of that, it doesn't sit as nicely as I had hoped it would. I think something else is I could take in the sides just a little bit. Now, I don't want to overfit it because garments that are too tight without proper understructures can be really uncomfortable. So that's something that I'm kind of waffling on as to whether I want to do that or not in the future. All in all, I am very happy with this outfit and I'm going to be getting a lot of wear out of this. And this is kind of like my first venture into berets. I saw Rachel's video earlier in the week and I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. So I went and picked up myself one 100% wool and I'm quite happy with it. I think it's cute. I really need to work on how to style my hair with it. But you know what? It all comes with the territory. It's something that I'm going to be constantly improving on. Hopefully. <laughs> I would love to know what you thought of today's video and what your favorite vintage inspired accessory is. And I also want to do a quick shout out to Ana Luisa Jewelry. They are currently having a Black Friday sale and you can get up to 25% off your order. Or if you've missed Black Friday sale and you're watching this afterwards, you can still use my code ENCHANTED10 for 10% off your order. So thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like what you saw today and you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed, you can click the subscribe button down below. I hope you've enjoyed my first vintage inspired project. I still have more coming and I also have more historical projects coming out. Um, yeah, so I think that is everything for today. Thank you for sticking around this far and I will see you in my next video. Bye. That is bright.